Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, we review the Polaroid i2, the brand's very first analog instant camera with built-in manual controls, continuous autofocus, and the sharpest lens ever in an instant camera, according to Polaroid. Um, overall, the camera um, comes with six different shooting modes, ranging from an aperture priority and a shutter priority mode um, over um, multiple exposure and an auto mode all the way to a full manual exposure mode. Interestingly, you can of course shoot the camera with the newer iType films, but it also lets you shoot um, the Polaroid 600 or even the SX70 films. The camera comes in a beautiful sleek package with um, a handle strap and comes with a handle strap, a USB-C charging cable, a lens cap and a helpful quick start guide. The camera appears to be directed at prosumers or ambitious amateurs with a price tag of 699 euro or um, 599 US dollars plus retail tax, which ends up approximately in the same range. I got the chance to take the Polaroid i2 through its paces prior to its official release and went on two different photo walks together with my buddies um, Simon and Jules in and around Munich. And most of you will already know Simon from our earlier videos and especially from our SX70 review that we did in Zurich a while ago. He's very fond of Polaroid cameras and of course I wanted to get his perspective here as well. We shot all sorts of i-type films, both color and black and white, um, trying to test the different modes of the camera and get a better understanding. And of course, we can't wait to share the images and the results here with you. So let's dive in there. So what about the features, the design and the build quality? The Polaroid i2 has a fresh modern design that still references its classic Polaroid roots and especially long-term users of Polaroid cameras will find their way around easily and find key elements and key controls in the same um, places. And yet they manage to integrate new features and displays uh, nicely. Um, the camera comes in all black and is made of high quality materials and a special coating creates a premium finish that is really nice to the touch. The i2 weighs um, 563 grams and there are various accessories available. So next to the st handle strap that it comes with, you could also get a premium shoulder strap, uh, shoulder holsters, uh, matching camera bags, and all these kinds of accessories that really let you ca carry the camera and the films in style. The 98mm f8 lens here is of course a core element and it offers aperture ranging um, from f8 all the way down to f64 and the camera supports shutter speeds from um, 1 250th of a second to 30 seconds plus a bulb mode. The i2 has a continuous autofocus three lens system with a minimum focusing distance of 0.4 meters for which the inner frame in the optical viewfinder is the right composition indication. And of course, all the way up to infinity for which the outer frame is uh, supposed to be used. And um, if you're having a distance in between, you need ba basically need to guess where the correct frame lines would be for that particular composition. 
The autofocus works with the LiDAR, a high accuracy infrared based ranging system, um, which provides precise ranging for setting the ideal focus uh, distance. And furthermore, there's a built in light meter and exposure compensation feature. And the i2 also offers a tripod mount um, on the bottom for stable longer exposures. The Polaroid i2 comes um, with two displays, an outer display for um, menu navigation and an inner display in the optical viewfinder that lets you access all the important relevant information while shooting. The camera itself is chargeable via a USB-C cable and should be fully charged before using it for the very first time. And like um, other Polaroid uh, cameras in the portfolio, it also offers an additional um, um, app infrastructure so you can connect it to the Polaroid app with additional controls and of course in order to do firmware updates and similar things and the app is available on iOS and Android. As mentioned in the introduction there are six different shooting modes and I would briefly um, run you I would like to briefly run you through those. Most importantly, you have a very convenient auto exposure mode that selects the fitting aperture and shutter speed for you depending on the situation. And there's not much you can do wrong, but and yet you can use the selection dial here on the front to still select the aperture in that mode. So if you would prefer a wider open aperture for that scene, it lets you do that um, until you reach the maximum for that scene that is still compatible with the maximum shutter speed. Um, and the values um, and the focus are locked by half pressing the shutter. And then of course you're, you're good to go. You can make your final composition and take the shot. In the aperture priority mode, you can choose um, the aperture using the selection dial here in the front, ranging from f8 all the way down to f64. And the camera will then select the fitting shutter speed, um, as is common for these modes, based on your motif and the selected aperture or exposure compensation on the other dial that uh, we have here. In the shutter priority mode, you select the shutter speed and the camera determines the best fitting aperture. Um, this can come in handy if you are interested in ensuring uh, longer exposure times on a tripod, for instance, and still get correct exposure. Of course, again, the camera would tell you if you would be potentially overexposing your shot. And it works really well. We did it here, for instance, for that quick uh, spontaneous shot of a police car passing by. Um, Simon just put it there. Um, in the shutter um, priority mode, um, yeah, determined it should be a longer exposure. And yeah, it worked out nicely. In the multiple exposure mode, uh, the camera will automatically determine the right amount of light depending on the amount of exposures that you select. And this I really like that you can select between two, so a typical double exposure, and all the way up to four multiple exposures. And then it would calculate, okay, how much light should each of these exposures get in order to have a fully nicely exposed um, film at the end. In the manual mode, you are free to choose um, an aperture and shutter speed yourself. And of course, deliberately over or under expose the film as much as you want. Um, of course, while this gives you the most creative freedom, it also removes a lot of the convenience of the other modes, especially the auto mode. And then uh, last but not least, there's a self timer mode that of course is less unusual. And here the camera allows you to set a self timer between three, six, nine, and 12 seconds. And uh, you just half press the shutter in order to activate it. Then yeah, jump into place if it's a group shot with other people, for instance, and then it would take the shot after the time span has passed. In case your selected shutter speed is too low in any of these modes, you get a handshake icon um, that reminds you to either hold the camera particularly still or of course put it in a stable position or on a tripod. Um, for shooting indoors or for artistic purposes, there is a built-in flash function that comes in handy, of course, and it may be used automatically or manually with all sorts of external flashes as well that can be simply connected via this um, 2.5 millimeter Uno audio jack here at the, at the back, uh, so a flash sync port. And the built-in flash has a range of approximately 2.5 meters. It's like kind of a classic in-your-face flash, but especially for portraits, it worked surprisingly well and created also really nice natural colors in my perception. Um, due to the relatively low ISO of Polaroid film, it is recommended to always use the flash when indoors. <music>
So what about the lens and the image quality? The Polaroid i2 comes with a Japanese designed 98 millimeter lens with a three lens system made of optical grade polycarbonate and acrylic with anti-reflective coating. And this is an unusually good lens for such an instant camera and uh, it positively affects the results and helps uh, get out the most or bring out the most of the Polaroid film material in our opinion. Um, according to Polaroid, this is the sharpest lens ever used in a Polaroid camera and we were all really positively um, surprised. The cobblestones in this image, to give you a few examples, are really detailed and also here in this portrait you get a lot of nuance and details. And the outstanding lens in combination with the six different shooting modes and really well exposed or shooting modes that also help you expose your film correctly. Um, turn this into a really nice professional tool in our opinion. The maximum aperture of f8 um, appears to be a bit limiting at first glance but then once you think of it um, the camera because of the size of the film is essentially a medium format camera so you need a pretty large lens in order to get the entire frame exposed. And here, in my opinion, the engineers did a pretty good job at finding a good compromise between the size of the lens that still feels good, prominent, I would say, in the overall design, but still natural and harmonious, and then a maximum aperture that would serve most use cases well. So in other words, if you would want something higher than f8, um, like f 5.6 or so, the lens would have been significantly larger. And also if you think of it, um, the equivalent of a 98 millimeter um, focal length um, on a 35 millimeter camera here would be around 39 millimeter for this particular one. So you have a slightly wide angle um, lens around 40 millimeter, very similar to how the natural eye, um, the eye naturally sees the world, maybe a little bit um, wider here. And um, yet, because of the minimum focusing distance of 0.4 meters, you can get pretty close to your subject and create beautiful out of focus areas in a really beautiful bouquet when shot at f8. And this is what the engineers were aiming for at the end, to get a nice compromise between a reasonably sized lens and a beautiful bouquet and really good sharpness. And I would argue that this f8 lens combines that pretty well. Um, without creating an oversized uh, lens that kind of feels unnatural in the design or um, yeah, making compromises that are not, not good or that are, are unreasonable. And um, at least to my eyes, the bouquet is really, really beautiful and overall the lens performs really nice. And if you think of it, F8 hmm, it also depends on the film stock, right? And um, iType and Polaroid 600 film has an ISO of 640. So in most situations, it will not be a problem to have a maximum aperture of F8. And only if you're using S670 film with uh, an ISO of 160, you really need a lot of light available, like a really bright sunny day, and then you are still good to go at f8 or even um, less. And uh, so I personally think they found a good compromise, but at first glance, if you just look at the specs and don't think about it, it feels, oh, it might be a limitation, but it's actually not. Overall, the image quality is fantastic, and we felt like, especially in combination with all the automatic modes that really support the photographer in getting correct exposure, you do get really, really nice results, and um, it's super sharp, super nice bokeh, and especially for portraits and close-ups, I really enjoyed um, shooting this camera and the kind of quality that you get out of it.
what about the handling in our personal impressions? Overall, the camera feels really nice and uh, the ergonomics are fantastic. The finish uh, feels really sleek and premium and the only downside is that it uh, seems to catch dust easily or draw that dust easily. And visually, I particularly like the attention to detail that was given here by Polaroid, such as the quote by Edwin Land on the bottom that feels more like an Easter egg or the small animations and micro interactions in the um, menu here on that display, or also that the USB-C cable is branded. All that to me feels, uh, gives the entire camera a high-end feel and a manufacturer could have easily cut corners and costs here but Polaroid uh, decided to go all in and focus on all these little details and get them right and at least to me that matters and I can really feel that they put a lot of energy into it and overall created a high value product. Um, when turning the camera on, it makes a little bit of a funny noise but other than that, uh, the sounds are really, really nice and they kind of fit what you expect from a Polaroid camera when it, um, they're very typical Polaroid. I particularly like the quiet autofocus sound that kind of confirms that you are in focus and also that classic ejection sound after you've taken a shot. As pointed out before, the lens is absolutely gorgeous and uh, creates really nice and sharp results. And what we liked um, especially is that it comes with a 49 millimeter filter thread. So a typical standard size, you could say, and there are a lot of filters and other accessories already out there. And it will be interesting to see what the community and users are using this camera for and how they combine the different accessories available on the market. And maybe also what Polaroid might be introducing in the future. The battery charge lasts surprisingly long. In our cases, um, we shot um, often three packs of film in one of the photo walks each and only got the battery charged down one of the bars um, here on the display. And that kind of fits to what Polaroid is um, saying that you can easily shoot 16 or up to 16 film packs with one full charge. And that appears realistic based, realistic based on our um, experience as well. It takes a moment to switch between the different modes you're using the menu, but once you're in there, um, the user interface is very clear and intuitive, and especially in combination with that selection dial here in the front, these different modes are really a lot of fun to use. And we really enjoyed making that conscious effort of trying out the different modes and get, for instance, the water blurry here or the passing police car kind of into a motion blur. and having portraits shot at wide open apertures and so on. It really invites you, the camera invites you to try different approaches to photography. And as a result, I perceive the camera as a very versatile tool while retaining the simple handling that Polaroid cameras are famous for. And to me, this is really great because it um, makes sure that as somebody who's not using it that often or as an ambitious amateur, you still feel comfortable around the camera and yet uh, you can easily create really interesting shots with it. Um, the only thing that we noticed is that in the aperture and um, shutter priority modes, it's relatively easy to also overexpose or underexpose a shot and it occasionally happened to us that we <laughs> kind of were careless, so to speak, and disregarded what was shown in the optical viewfinder in the display at the bottom to us that basically told us, be careful, you're overexposing the shot and we didn't notice it or didn't, we're not careful enough to notice. But of course, this is a problem not of the camera, but of the users behind the camera. The only real downside, speaking of the optical viewfinder that we could find is um, that the small display was not entirely sharp for us um, when looking through it and only when looking completely straight through it and in a certain way we could see it um, perfectly, the valuable information that is provided here. And we asked Polaroid about it and we learned that this display is tuned um, for people who are nearsighted because a broad amount in the population and the wider population is nearsighted. So it makes sense to gear such a display towards that need. Um, but if you have really good vision, it might happen to you that it appears to be out of focus um, because of that. Um, and uh, but that's really it. And as mentioned before, kind of um, if you're in shutter priority mode, the one 250th of a second might also be a little bit limiting depending on the amount of 
uh, light you have available um, because you might easily overexpose a shot. But yeah, other than that, a really fantastic camera. Um, Simon Samory captures it nicely. He said, it will be very hard for me not to buy one. And Jules was also blown away when it comes to the build quality, the very sharp lens and the fun handling. And I can only agree with the two of them. It's a fantastic camera overall that really manages to bring the different shooting modes, the curiosity about photography into a really nice package and makes it really easy, especially in the automatic modes to get perfectly exposed um, frames. And I can see myself certainly using it for um, editorials, for portraits and for other more professional applications that are just fun and um, reliable. It's a fun and reliable camera and a beautiful overall package. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Polaroid i2. A fantastic camera with an incredibly fast autofocus, a beautiful sharp lens, and overall six different shooting modes that really let you use the camera in all sorts of ways. I can certainly see myself shooting editorials and all sorts of things with this camera. And to me personally, Polaroid also has a special place in my heart and also a special role for the film community. For me, the company is really like a phoenix risen from the ashes at its height. Um, historically, it was a pop culturally highly significant um, camera manufacturer and you had stars like Andy Warhol using the SX-70 publicly. And at its lowest point, Polaroid was simply out of business and it took the impossible project to revive all the film production capabilities and reintroduce um, cameras to the market, new cameras to the market that are capable of shooting Polaroid film. And it was such a long journey and such a long term commitment from the company in continuous innovation. And to me, this camera, the Polaroid i2 is the result of this continuous innovation and the continuous constant in investment from Polaroid into the film community and the analog instant cameras. Um, and if you look at it closer, you see that there were Japanese former Olympus engineers involved in creating this lens. And there was a set of international designers and experts involved in creating the case and the materials used, deciding on the materials used and all that. There's so much years long effort and research going into this camera and you can really, really feel it. And of course, it's a demonstration of the commitment of the company, but it also shows how Polaroid takes what was always great about the company and gives that into the hands of a 21st century photographer that kind of has that instant gratification curiosity. Like all of us today, um, we can barely wait 10 to 15 minutes for the film to develop and show us the final result. And yet, um, 
we appreciate that kind of magic and surprise that also is associated with Polaroid and Polaroid film. And um, I can't stress enough how much I think Polaroid means to the film community and what, what an important milestone the Polaroid i2 is in the company's history. For me, it is summing up and bringing it to a close all the innovation journey that they had in the last couple of years. Um, so a super valuable contribution to the community, a really great camera that I can highly recommend taking a look. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.